our listeners are listening, man. They're excited to have you with us too. I know this is going to be one of the best podcasts we've done to date. Uh, and just to kind of, you know, just to give us a little bit of background, man, why don't sure. you just bring us up to speed on, you know, what you've been through up to this point? No doubt. So, you know, I'll start from the beginning. You know, my parents, um, they immigrated from the Philippines. So I'm Filipino American. And uh, my mom came in 1977 before I was born. And she was, uh, she came here, she got her MD degree at, in, in Philippines, Far, East, Far Eastern University. And then she came here through the Navy as a medical officer. So why I mention that is because, you know, they set the model for me in terms of hard work and courage because, you know, imagine like I try to imagine myself going to a different country, a foreign country, you know, and trying to make it, you know, that's, that's, that's big time. That's big time. And then also my dad followed suit in, uh, you know, 78, which is the year that I was born. And, uh, you know, he was a blue collar guy, you know, he worked three jobs. So right then and there, you know, you know what, I, I thought to myself, like, I can't disrespect what they've done, uh, the opportunities they laid out for me. And, uh, of course, being, being Filipino, um, you know, my mom always pushed me towards the medical career, you know, because in our culture, like I say it all the time, being a doctor is like the pinnacle. Um, yeah. You know, you can be the president of any country, but, you know, if you're not a doctor, then, you know, forget it. <laughs> so, um, so it's along right. my, yeah, exactly. Along my journey, you know, through academics, you know, I had a lot of different dreams. I had a dream to be in the NBA. Uh, obviously, that didn't pan out. You know, Filipinos were not blessed with height. Um, so, uh, you know, I grew up with Michael Jordan from Chicago. So Michael Jordan, if you guys aren't watching, uh, the last dance right now, go check it out. It's, it's, it's pretty dope. Um, okay. So, awesome. yeah. So, you know, what also Jordan showed to me was like excellence and what being a champion was all about. So, you know, he was my idol growing up. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I thought about also taking the lawyer route, but I found that was not authentic to me. You know, I knew that I had compassion uh, from an yeah. early age. You know, I remember at, at the age of five, I would watch certain movies and they would just make me cry. You know, I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit that, you know, so, uh, you know, I always wanted to take on other people's mm. pain, you know, so that's something I didn't disrespect. That was something that was in my heart. And as I went through it, I realized, you know, um, that's, that's the route that I wanted to go. Uh, you know, of course, you know, I also wanted to enter the movie industry, but like, you know, my thought process at that young age was like, you know, if I get through a professional career, if I, you know, knock down those dominoes and get through it, you know, uh, work is quote unquote safe. It's, uh, there's job security, you make a good living, you know? So, um, in all honesty, full disclosure, I questioned it along the way. I'm like, is this re really what I want to do? But then I saw my first hip replacement, um, you know, so, and I knew that I felt love, and for, love at first sight. And, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, like, when you find a passion, when you find a purpose, like you'll walk the ends of the earth for it. You know, right. you'll, you'll, you'll grind for it. You know, you'll sleepless nights, blood, sweat, tears, all that stuff, you know? So, um, wow. you know, that's what, that's what I've been doing. And, uh, you know, it's come full circle because now like that's my specialty in orthopedics is hip and knee replacement. So briefly about my education, went to the University of Michigan for undergrad, go blue. So I don't know if you can see in the background, I got some Michigan stuff going on, but it's, it's everywhere. And then University of Illinois, Chicago from medical school and residency, then uh, was able to luckily uh, train with the best and the brightest in our industry uh, for fellowship. So now I'm in my 10th year of practice in San Diego and I can't believe it's gone by that fast, you know, and you know, what I love is that like I've built the vision that I had 10 years ago in terms of my private practice. You know, um, there's a great quote. I know a lot of your listeners like Tony Robbins, you know, there's a great quote and I'll paraphrase it. You know, he talks about like, you often don't accomplish like what you want to in a year, but what you accomplish in 10 years can astound you. You know, those aren't exact words, mm. but it's true. Like yeah, because yeah. it's, because it's true. Cause like we have lofty goals and I love lofty goals, you know, for what we can accomplish in a year, but you add those years up and then 10 years later down, the, down the road, you're like, wow, wow. You know? And, uh, Luckily, you know, I've been seeing that the fruits of my labor right now, but, you know, I do have that entrepreneurial mindset as, 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 you, as you discussed and um, awesome. Yeah. Kind of current thing that I've been working on is like not to be unidimensional. You know, I see a lot of okay. people, David Goggins talks about finish lines, you know, another one of my inspires, you know, he talks about how like he met an NBA player at an airport uh, NFL player. And he went, he went up to Goggins, he's like, yo, Goggins, how do you, how do you keep that dog mentality? 
And he's like, yeah. well, let me, let me flip it back on you. You know, what was your finish line? He's like, I got to the NFL. So once he hit, his, hit that finish line, he was done. He got complacent. You know, I'm trying, right. to, find, I'm trying to find new finish lines. And right. uh, those finish lines have to be something I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about car racing, motorsport racing. So, you know, I've really dialed into that. And, you know, the vision is to become a pro racer. You know, some people say it's oh, impossible. Really? Yeah, some people say it's impossible. But you know what? Those are their limits. They're not my limits. So um, I'm just going for it. And then now I'm entering uh, the motivational speaking industry because, you know, my inspires are Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, E.T., Eric Thomas. Um, so I'm wearing, this is not serendipitous. I actually put on the 10X bracelet uh, today, you know, so, um, nice. because, you know, that's in line with who I am, you know, I want to help the world. That's my purpose in life. So, um, there you go, man. I've been, I've been spitting, I've been spitting too much, been rambling. So that's awesome, dude. I mean, I love that. That's tons of value right there. And for those of you wondering where you can find Dr. David, my man, David, you can look him up on Instagram. Mostly is that, that would you say that's your best platform? Yeah, so like now I'm really starting. I mean, to I know you got a lead. Let me just say he's got a clean 150,000 plus followers. Thank you, That's bro. just a cool number right there. So this isn't to be taken lightly, guys. Make sure you follow him at doctor. That's dr. F A B I L U S. F. That's that pronounce. Did I say that, did I say that right? At dr. Yeah, it's, it's, it's F A B I L U S. Yeah, so it's it fabulous. Fabulous, yeah. So. Let's talk about this, man, because you're right. You have been talking a lot, and that's fine, because I want you to be talking a lot. That's that's what this is supposed to be about you, you know. Yeah. So don't don't feel bad about talking. People want to know what you what you're up to, and there's a lot of people who can really relate to what you're saying, right? Because you're representing the culture, you're yeah. representing a certain demographic and an age group, you're representing a certain type of person with certain trials and, and uh tribulations so it's it's really good because there's people who are, who like i said will relate to this and look at you as a source of inspiration yeah, yeah. so there's so many things that you actually brought up that we you know that we can talk about you know and i was sitting here writing these notes first and foremost let's talk about the the ideology of you growing up thinking, you know, I had to be a doctor. Yeah. How much did that like stress you out? Because there's a commonality or there's a common misunderstanding, I would say, out in the public right now, like a public notion that parents sometimes force their kids into doing things. Absolutely. No doubt. Is that no something doubt. that was that kind of like was that what the situation was like? Yeah, you know, that's, that's definitely something, on that. yeah, yeah, you know, there's, there's definitely something that I battle with, you know, and um, there's certain pursuits uh, that I kind of shied away from because I'll be honest, I wanted to make my mom happy, you know, um, so a lot of it throughout the, throughout the course, I was kind of doing it for her, you know, but, you know, I believe in destiny, I believe in, um, you know, uh, I'm a spiritual person, so that was my path, you know, and now looking back, um, there's no other place that I, I'd rather be right now, but, you know, kind of now also I'm like, okay, I'm going back to those passions, you know? So, because, um, right. Yeah. You know, I think it, we talked about before this, like in this day and age, you gotta be versatile. You gotta be multidimensional and, uh, you know, you gotta find what speaks to you. So, um, because, you know, and I'm digressing a little bit, but like, in this uh, certain certain age, these certain times, things are changing so quickly, you know. And if you only have right. skills, a limited skill set to one industry, you know that could change. It could be gone, could be obsolete in in five years or in a year. So you got to be able to shift gears. But yeah, going back, yeah, going back to what you said, you know, like I do, I believe it's just so key for some people, like the kids or the, the younger listeners, even the ones who are in college right now, maybe doing that, yeah. you know. And they're just stuck in a position where they're not exactly living out their true purpose. Now, though, no. you, you, which I mean, but, but it so, is, though. Is I'll, it, I'll, use a, I'll use a good example. Sorry to interrupt, Henry, but before no, I was, you know, I was a huge skateboarder, you know, huge, just like 
totally just geeked out about it, you know, and I was like, you know, I would do it 24 seven, you know, I would be skating till 11 PM, 12 PM at night, you know, just practicing. And, uh, you know, that was something that I went for. I had a dream of becoming a pro, you know, but, you know, of course my mom pushed me towards that, uh, medicine. She didn't, was entirely supportive of that, you know, because at that point the thought was there's no future in it, you know, but like, I grew up with Tony Hawk. Look at Tony Hawk now. You know, the guy is 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 a trailblazer. He's legendary. You know, right. he's <laughs> he's world renowned. So he took his passion wow. and he made he made something of it, you know, because like, yeah. you know, if if your passion is there, you know, and you're doing what you love, like the money will come. You know, if you're at the top one percent, even ten percent of your game you know, you're going to be successful. And even if the monetary thing is not there, you know what, just what it brings to you or brings to your soul, you can't put a price tag on that, you know? So for your younger viewers, I'll say, you know what, give it a shot. You know, like if you want to be an actor, you want to be a musician, you know, you want to do, if you know, you want to be an artist or anything like that, give it a shot. You know, Wayne Gretzky says, uh, I don't know if the younger generation know who Wayne Gretzky is, but he's considered the best hockey player of all time. And I love his quote. He's like, you miss, you miss a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. And that's like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So yeah. true. You know, like, so true. All it takes is like, you take a hundred shots. All it takes is you hit one and that could change your life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Denzel Washington, one of my favorite actors. He got shot down like so many times, but he didn't give up. And look at look at where he's at now. You know, he's not just a fantastic actor; he's also just a fantastic person too. Um, I don't know him personally, but you know, this is what I see like on the internet stuff like that. So, yeah, like I said, you know, go for it. You know, hopefully your parents are supportive. You know, like Tony Hawk. Going back to that, his parents were super supportive. They're like, just just go for it. You know, so. Wow. Um, there might be, you know, there might be some defiance from your parents at that point, you know, but, you know, hopefully you can just sit down with them, have a conversation and be like, you know what, give me, you know, let me, let me, let me give this a shot, you know, cause, and I think it's still that kind of societal thing that says you got to go to college. And uh, I'm not here to say don't go to college, but like, if it's not in your wheelhouse, you know, the great thing is that they say 97% of all knowledge is on the internet. So you can teach yourself, you know, it's accessible. You can reach out to mentors on social media. You know, that's something that I didn't have. I had to go to right. the library. I had to go to the library to like, to like educate myself, you know, so. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fact though. And yeah, in so fact. many ways. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can learn pretty much the same thing. Wow. That's, that's actually a good point, you know, and uh, man, you're talking about a lot of things. We're talking about money. We're talking about risks. We're talking about comfort zones having vision this is just fire to be honest guys make sure you follow david at dr dot it's at dr dot f-a-b-i-l-u-s it's fabulous fabulous that's tricky man that's a well, what, let, me just, <laughs> let me just ask you what, what made you think of that it's just like a, a well that's, play on that's, words. that's funny yeah my parents always like they came up with it when i was younger and they were like they always wanted to put it on their license plate you know, and finally, like when I turned 16, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm pulling the trigger. I'm going to put it on my car. And uh, yeah, it was cheesy, you know, but, um, you know, it's okay. You know, I was, uh, I just went for it and, you know, kind of people knew it, you know, there's, there's, there's fabulous right there. So um, I think it's got pop value. So it's catchy. Um, yeah. You know, it's so contagious. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's so not David Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, gotta check him out. He's got over 155,000 followers. I'll make sure I put his information down below here in the description. And while you're at it, make sure you drop like a five star review, drop a comment, let us know what you think, how you feel, give us some feedback. And wow, man, this has been great so far. So you're talking about so many things that our audience think about. Even the concept of being, you know, multi dimensional. That's important. And that's something that for some people, I would say almost spooks them because when you start to talk like this, some people get 
and they get they get kind of weird but it's so true because we are not just one dimensional yeah you know and uh, my audience our audience we know this you know and it's more the more people who become enlightened and aware and wake up and become conscious they'll 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 recognize that they've been multi-dimensional you've been multi-dimensional this whole time david let me ask you this man based off our our conversation, man. I can tell you're you're a hustler. You're you're really an entrepreneur, and you grind, um, dude. What's what's been one of the things that's that's really pushed you, man? Like, what's your driving force or your your why? Would I I would even say what really motivates you? No, I, I love that, and I love that question. You know, um, and there's a lot of levels to it, a lot of layers to it. You know, um, you know, one from an early age, and I don't honestly, I don't know where it came from. Um, cause it was there such at a young age, like when I was yeah. five years old, I'm just like super, super competitive, you know, um, competitive. just super, super competitive, you know, and I remember we had this track and day field event, you know, when I was, when we were in kindergarten and, you know, there was like a hundred meter dash or maybe 50 meter dash at that age. Um, and I won first place, you know, and then there was this kid named Errol Park. He got second place, first grade. He, in, in the next year he beat me. And, you know, I was dejected, sobbing, you know, but like, you know what I did? I trained in the off season and I'm six years old, you know, and, and then the second grade, I won it, you know, so, um, trained in the off season at six years old. And I hated it, but like, you know, (laughs) like as I've grown, you know, being competitive with others is not entirely the best formula. You know, you got to be competitive with yourself and wherever that falls in the pecking order, that's where it falls, you know, because, um, but if you believe that your best is excellent you'll achieve excellence you know so so that's one thing um two i think yeah subconsciously you know um you know touched upon it that my parents set the model for hard work you know and that was something that i saw and that was something that i believed in you know and i think also with such a focus on studying hard for academics you know, that kind of mindset was imprinted uh, early on. And then, so now the question is what drives me? You know, now, you know, I'm, I'm 42 and I know that my time on this earth is, is limited. And I appreciate that more and more. Like when, I'm tw- when I was 25, I was like, dude, I got so much time, you know, but, and we do, but like each second that goes by gets me closer to my t- end of this time on earth. So. I'm going to, I'm going to maximize every second, you know, and, um, I just don't, I don't like sitting idle. You know, I like being, I like being productive. And, uh, I think that's a huge part of it because one of the end goals on that is to help contribute, you know, to the world. And cause that's what makes me happiest. You know, that's what keeps me going. And, um, yeah. And just, you know, a lot of it is just, what happens is, is you learn and you grow. And Tony Robbins says that growth is happiness. So, um, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's how I roll. And, uh, yeah, I just know, I believe in human potential and I think human potential is infinite. It's just that oftentimes life can beat us down. They can draw that down. They can bring that potential down. We all have this potential energy. We just got to flip it to kinetic energy. You know, so, um, you know, I'm just being, being the best version of myself. And, uh, yeah, I mean, also I just, you know, when all said, I, I want to have options, you know, um, I probably don't want to be an orthopedic surgeon my whole life. You know, I want to kind of diversify it because there's so much to life, uh, than just one, one lane, you know, there's like multiple lanes. So like, I want to take advantage of all that life can offer. You know, so, um, yeah, you know, that, yeah, so. That's awesome, dude. Definitely inspirational to me and to our listeners. Wow. So human potential, man, let's talk about that real quick. Does, do you think, though, do you believe that every human has the same amount of potential? Uh, what would you say, you know, and, and, and I know that's kind of a fully loaded question. No, what would you question. say about the idea, though, for those wondering, you know, how much potential they have, yeah. or, you know, what is their potential level, how to increase their potential, how to maximize their potential? 
how to tap into it, things like that. Because it's, you know, you're a living testimony. Yeah. Um, uh, you're a living test. You're a living testimony of you know someone who I would say is pushing the potential. You know what I mean? You've realized your potential, and then you've actually found a way to push it. Yeah. That's 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 huge right there. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead and talk about you know just the concept of potential, man. Yeah. No, I think, and that's a good question. You know, and um, I haven't really thought about that much, but it's a very good question. Does everybody? start out with equal potential. Um, I don't know, but I, I believe in abundance and I think all of us have a lot of potential, you know, a lot. And, um, you know, I can't speak to uh, a lot of people with, that live in poverty and it's just real. You know, those opportunities weren't there. Um, a lot of those opportunities, but you know, what I find the most inspirational are people that didn't have, you know, lived like through tough, tough times and um, didn't use it as an excuse. You know, they use it as fuel, you know. So um, a great right. quote that, 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 really, that really resonates with me is, and I don't know if there's absolutes here, but the quote is, uh, yeah. it says, you know, there's no such thing as an extraordinary person. There's ordinary people doing extraordinary things you know, um, and that was deep, you know, uh, we, we've been talking about all these guys like E.T., Eric Thomas, dude, he was, he was homeless, you know, he's hungry, but like, look at him now, you know, he used that to fuel him, you know, so he didn't use excuses, he just, yeah. he just worked hard, and he works hard, you know, and there's, there's, there's no shortcuts, you know, that's, you know, that's a pretty simple comp concept, simple, in concept, but like, and not entirely easy a lot, you know, uh, Tony Robbins, you know, he came from abusive household, uh, yeah. Grant Cardone, he had, a, he had a drug addiction, you know, David Goggins, you know, he, he failed, uh, being a Navy SEAL, I think at least twice. And, you know, he was super, super overweight and look at him now, you know, he kind of, so those are inspirational to me. You know, those were quote unquote, ordinary people who started doing extraordinary things. So, um, that's key right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, what, what happens is if you find your purpose, if you find your passion, and I think everybody brings a unique gift to this world, you know, um, you just got to find it, you know, and that's, that's something that it's when you work on it and yeah, it's work, but it's also fun too, you know? So, you know, that's something that, you know, you'll take home with it, that you'll, you'll work on at home. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's, that's magical, magical right there, you know, and there's a lot of naysayers that say you can't do it, but you know, and that can drown out your potential, but it's just noise, you know, it's just noise. So. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent, man. So looking at where you're at now, What would you say is your most proud accomplishment? You, you know, something that you're really proud of. I would say something that you're really something that stands out that you've had to yeah either accomplish or attain or yeah. something like that. Yeah. No. Um. The first thing that popped in my mind is, you know, I failed a pretty big exam that would have affected my career, would have kind of derailed it, you know? And, you know, for, for, for a long time, I was like, man, I gotta find something else. You know, all this, all this time that I put in, that I worked hard for was like, could be gone, you know? Um, and I was, sit, I was sitting, that, sitting with that for a while. But then, you know what? Towards when the time was coming for that second exam, I doubled down and I worked as hard as humanly, inhumanly possible. And I'm like, you know what, if I go down again, I'm going to go out swinging, you know, and I nailed that exam and uh, I'm getting chills just talking about it right there. So, you know, it just showed to me that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, quitting 
It's not in my DNA, you know. Um, there's going to be failures along the way, but true failure is when you quit. You know? So um, that's something that's really – so it kind of – Kind yeah, of makes yeah. it kind of makes me kind of yeah. think like maybe I'm on borrowed time right now with my career, so I'm not going to disrespect that. So, what would you suggest to those who do want to quit? Those who are on the fence of quitting, they're just this close to giving up. Yeah. On something that they really want to accomplish, not something that they hate. Yeah. Or, we know, can I, talk about both of those. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost two different types of quitting. Yeah. No, I think. You know, one, um, I do a lot of reading and something I came across recently, it's uh, a lot of people stop at the one yard line, you know, and stop at the one yard line. You know, all it takes is that the one, football reference. Yeah. All it takes is that one last push to get in there. You know, oftentimes wow. it's also one like it's darkest before dawn. You know, it's like Whoa. when things got really difficult, oftentimes you're, you're so close. You know, you're so close, you know, just 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 give it your all man if it's if it's your huge huge dream and you know you're on the verge of quitting just just give it your all you know kind of what david goggins says in the navy seals there's this 40 percent rule meaning like when they're running when they're doing drills they're and they feel they're about about to quit they're working only at 40 percent so they got another 60%. percent okay. the- Wow. And Navy SEALs, it works, obviously. I mean, those guys are like, you know, they're, they're elite. So, right. you know, I, I use that in my day. Like when I go, when I go, when I go running um, and, you know, go for a jog. When I feel like my mind, my body tells me I want to quit, I tell myself I'm like 40%, 40%, 40%. And that keeps me pushing. And it works for me, you know, so that's awesome. If you feel you're on the verge of quitting, just just think about that. Think about the Navy SEALs. Think about that 40 percent rule because you got so much more left in you. So. That's incredible, man. So looking towards the future yeah. with all the wisdom that you've got, you know, everything that you've been through, all of the experience that you've gained now, do you see yourself living up to your fullest potential do you see yourself reaching your max <clears throat> i do you know i i, I gotta believe right you gotta and, believe uh, you know so, one, one my my dreams are lofty some would tell them they're unrealistic and that if they're so lofty if they're like way up here and maybe i get three quarters of the way i'm still right here you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, yeah, I mean. But what's, what happens when you hit a goal though, David? Like what happens when you, when you let's say you yeah. set a goal and you, and you hit it. Yeah. Or, you know, you set a lofty goal and you hit that goal. What are you going to do with that? Like, what do you do with those points? I mean, complacency is not my DNA as it is right now. You know, um, that's not to say when I'm 70 or 80, you know, if I'm blessed enough to get to that age, um, if that's going to change, you know, but. I like to find new goals, you know, you because new goals. I keep, yeah, new finish lines, new finish, new lines. finish lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah because, that's powerful yeah. right there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's so, awesome. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's like I said, you know, this, this world has so much to offer. We just got to look for it. Thousand percent. So let's talk just a little bit about growing up. You know, you're born in the '80s, late '80s, late '70s. I'm uh, or the late '70s. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> late '70s. I, look, I know. I look young for my age. It's Filipino genes, so. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah, percent, man. So, whatever, you, whatever diet you got going on, you should probably share that with the public. <laughs> you say we're all trying to have that glow. Let's all be glowing. Yeah, just just stay fit. You know, stay we'll out talk, of the sun. We'll, we'll talk about your 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 health, your, your routines in a sec. I just want to see though, dude. Like the the transgression over time from the '80s, what you've seen from the '80s, the '90s till now, these three decades. Yeah. Right? 
more is that however much time you've experienced i mean almost yeah almost four now bro you know so. uh what do you think man like just give us some overall feedback about just changes in technology and in and, and business in the way people interact no it's 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 bananas man like i didn't get my first cell phone until after college you know and um I was in the age, I started in the age of cassette tapes and records, uh, VHS, you know, when I was like super, super young, you know, my dad had eight tracks. Uh, I'm sure some of you might not even know what that is, you know, um, and uh, Nintendo, well, there was Atari first, was the first gaming system, and then Nintendo came out, and that was like a game changer, and I look back at those graphics right now, I'm like, wow, that's... It's dog meat, you know, but um, it's just been cool to see, like our first cell phones were like, those were the people that were kind of like, quote unquote, rich and wealthy. They were like this big, you know, they were like, you had to hold it like this, you know, but now we have it like in the palm of our hand and like, you know, I was part of internet 1.0, you know, it just, it had come out when I was in high school or early college and it was like super slow, you know, we were working on, you know, there was no such thing as wireless internet. And just to see where it's gone and technology is moving at such a rapid pace. It's not moving like this. It's moving like this. And, uh, you know, Gary V says all the time, we're like living in the best times ever in the world. You know, um, maybe not right now with the coronavirus situation, but it's temporary. It's going to pass. Um, meaning there's so much opportunity out there. You know, like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, there's definitely, we wouldn't have been able to have this type of exchange. You know, we didn't have like True. video phone calling or anything like that. You know, yeah, we could have hooked up on the phone, but like, how are we going to meet each other? You know what I'm saying? Um, so definitely. There's, no. there's, there's just, there's so much out there. And I think... You know, if you just work hard, if you just grind, you'll find it. You'll find it. And it's, uh, I think it's amazing. And I think what's great is like, because what moves the world forward is collaboration, right? And like when we would do collaboration meetings back in the day, we'd have to meet up in person. You know, we'd have to, everybody's schedules would have to meet around. Like, yeah. you know, in my industry in orthopedics, you know, <clears throat> the sharpest minds would have to travel to a certain place and we're all busy, you know, so that might take like six, seven, six, seven months to even coordinate. Now we can hook up on a phone in an instant. And not only that, you can get more people involved. So all that collaboration is just moving fast, you know, and that's why I think you're seeing the trajectory like that. So um, yeah, it, it's cool. You know, like we're living in a science fiction world and, uh, I think, I think that's awesome. You know, you got artificial intelligence, you got vir virtual reality. And, uh, you know, what I love, a lot of that stuff is coming into our industry with orthopedics. We got robotic technology, uh, AI. Yeah, let's gonna talk about that for a second. Yeah. I mean, that's where you're at. That's your expertise. That's where you're, you're repping the brand right now. Shout out to where you're at. Yeah. So people can just walk into you and, uh, and then talk with you. They got an appointment or what? Yeah. So, um, you know, when I started early on in practice, uh, marketing as a physician was kind of taboo, right? Um, and I'm not good at, really good at inventing things. I think what I'm good at is uh, finding trends or kind of predicting, finding, finding, predicting where the trends are going to go, you know? Um, yeah. And then I saw that, you know what, this marketing is, 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 is going to go. So, you know, one, I got my... I got my own okay. personal website when I started practice and a lot of my partners, the surgeons in town would be like, dude, what are you doing? You know, like, why are you doing this? You know, why are you spending money on this? But you know, the entrepreneurial no. mindset, yeah, you got to spend money to make money. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So one to come and see me, you know, one, the whole thing is like, it's a, it's a full multi-pronged marketing attack you know you just can't go word of mouth is huge don't get me wrong it's always bread and butter but now what i'm seeing it's word of mouth coupled with what they see on the internet with you or on oh, social okay. media. wow so you gotta attack it this way you gotta attack it that way you gotta attack it that way 
So, um, you know, what people do, you know, they call the office, they make an appointment to come see me. Um, and my specialty is hip and knee replacements, you know, um, but I do a lot of non-operative treatments. I tell my patients all the time, you know, they ask me when I should do surgery and I'm like, you know what, I think you'll know when you're ready, you know, and that's, that's playing the long game, you know, because I can sit there, be in the short game, try to convince them to do surgery, but that's not the best. That's not one. That's not the right thing to do, you know? So, um, yeah. So then they come up, come to me, a lot of them find me now. The reason why I mentioned the internet stuff, because they find me now, they see that I do robotic assisted knee replacements. And, um, this opportunity arose for me about four years ago. And, um, I saw the vision in it. I saw the potential in it. And uh, one plus, I'm just I was a video gamer growing up, and I'm Asian, you know, so I love all that that technology stuff. So, um, so you just brought it to reality. You just manifested. Yeah, yeah. So I just rolled with it. You know, I, it really didn't provide added risk to my patients, and I saw that there was something there. And um, luckily, you know, I was it was serendipitous. I was one of the first surgeons in the world to use this technology for total knee replacements. And that kind, of, that kind of put me on the map, so to speak. You know, it's kind of gave, it gave me notoriety, not just nationally, but internationally. And it's, yes. just been, it's been great to be a part of that wave. And, you know, it's, it's a message, it's a vision that it's bigger than me. You know, I want every surgeon to use it because I believe in it. And I think it's better for the patients, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm all about spreading that message right there because I think – you know, one, someone told me, and it makes sense, like, what industry, yes. try to name any industry where robotics came in, and then they took it out. I can't think of one. I mean, you got the auto industry, they got robotics, haven't stopped, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not going anywhere. Um, there's still a lot of naysayers, you know, get a lot of, growth, right. but that's the older generation, you know, the millennial generation, the I Jenners. They're going to want this technology, you know, so yeah, that, yeah, now, yeah, now it's, it's almost at the tipping point. Uh, it's not there yet, but I'm also, I'm That's, already, uh, I'm, I'm already got my high beam true. for what's next, you know, um, and that's virtual reality and artificial intelligence. So, um, you know, I'm kind of got my, uh, got my focus on, uh, opportunities are there. So. Wow, man. So being in San Diego, that's where you are, right? Yeah. That's, I, Seems like it's one of the more modern and one of the more advanced places to be to be doing what something like what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So you're in the right place at probably one of the best times ever. Yeah. And it's really just getting started. I mean, it's yeah. this is really just the beginning of something that could possibly change the entire industry. Now I know you mentioned you probably won't do this forever. Yeah. But for 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 the moment, while you are in it, I mean, and while you're doing it. What would you say though is is what would you say is all headed? A lot of this robotic stuff, a lot of the AI things, a lot. I mean, would there ever be a chance where a, a machine could do a surgery? You don't even need a person. Like that's that's a great do you have question. Any insight. That's a that's a great question. You know, um, yeah, you know, like I've come to the realization over the last few years that we may not be doing joint replacements for people anymore you have stem cell therapy which is not it's, oh, a lot, yeah. it's a lot of hype right now i'll be honest a lot of hype but okay. as it advances i think there's going to be a huge role for it you know um also yeah i mean i think and i've thought about this too like robots will probably be doing surgery uh, most of it for a certain extent where the surgeon may not even have to be scrubbed in um it's interesting it just, yeah. I just don't. I just don't think the the baby boomer generation is comfortable with that. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think my generation, Generation X, would be comfortable with that. But I think the millennials, the I Geners, as they get older, would be comfortable with that. You know, so um, so I, yeah, I would say the old me, like ten years ago, would have been freaking out. You know, being like, oh, I'm gonna have a job, but you know what? I've learned, I've obtained more and more skills where I can navigate through that, you know, where I can do other things and that's okay. You know, ultimately if it's better for the patient, I'm all for that. So, awesome, sorry, man. so I keep inter sorry, man, I keep interrupting you. That's my bad. So dude, no, you're good, man. You're doing fine, man. I'm just saying, okay, so that's awesome. So boom, let's, 
let's say you reach all your goals in the medical field and then you, you move on to your next endeavors. Yeah. I mean, dude. Real quick. How, how do you get started? You know what I mean? What are some things that you do when you started from zero? Because there's a lot of people right now who are starting from zero. Yeah. Or they're trying to make a transition to something totally different or totally new. And it's, yeah. it can be difficult. Yeah. You know, one, I always talk about find your passion, right? You know, and then make your, make your passion your purpose. So that's, that's your starting point. You know, um, don't do entirely things where your number one is to make money. Don't get me wrong. That's important. You know, I value the dollar as much as the next person. Um, and it's just, just facts that, you know, it's kind of what it does, what it makes the world go round, but you want to make money and doing something that you love. So one, find your passion, make it your purpose, come up with a vision, you know, like put yourself vision, envision yourself in that, that space that you want to be in that spot that you want to be. Like for me, when I started practice, I envisioned myself you know, being on stage, speaking to other surgeons. I envision myself being a leader, a trailblazer in the field. I envision myself doing X amount of surgeries. And it happens, you know, um, and it's manifestation. But you got to take that manifestation. It's, it means nothing. It's just without action, you know. The most successful people in the world, they're people of action. So write out a game plan. Put pen to paper, write down your goals. Be specific about your goals. Like for example, I'm a big car guy. I'm not here to say it's all about material things, but I'm just using it as an example. You know, instead of saying like, I want a nice car when I grow up. No, you gotta be like, you gotta one, put it in the present tense. You'd be like, I have a Porsche GT3 RS 2016 by 5 p.m. September 1st, 2020. You know, and that gives you a deadline that gives you a specific picture. And so one, you know, read those goals in the morning, read those goals. And it gets your subconscious to figure out ways how to get there. Write down action steps, you know, um, as to how to implement that, that vision. And I think there's a lot of thought out there where like, it's gotta be perfect before I execute. There's no such thing as, as a perfect plan. You just right. gotta get going. And you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes along the way, but you learn from them and it just evolves from there. Um, that is a lot of fear that's in there, but like, you know, what gives you more bravery, courage is that when you face those fears, when you get those roadblocks, but you keep going and uh, yeah, I mean, because, man, you know, like, you only got one life. You only got one life. Unless you believe in having uh, multiple, you know, having uh, having previous lives. But, I mean, as who you are right now, you only have one life. So just just go for it, you know. Um, it just takes, you just got to, you just got to, you just got to go. You just got to take action, you know. And excuses. Well, no, don't make excuses. Um it's not a lack of resources. It's a lack of resourcefulness. Um, Tony Robbins right. talks, about, talks about burn the boats, meaning if you're going to take over an island and you get on there on a boat, if you leave the boats there, you always have that option to retreat, to go. You burn the boats, so you have no other option except forward. You know, so um, I love that. So just, just, just burn the boats, you know, so... Um, yeah, you know, that's it's, fire. That's yeah. fire. So, I mean, dude, I mean, literally the notes right now that I've gotten, page, yeah. pages right now. So, this <laughs> conversation could literally go for probably another two, three, four hours. That's awesome. I know we both have things to do. Yeah. So, I mean, I want to let you, <clears throat> I want to let you, man, like really just dive into any final things, any final thoughts, anything that you really do want to share with everybody. I mean, you shared so much, dude. I, mean, that, I, I appreciate it. I know the listeners do. And, um, and, and also if there's anybody that you want to give a special shout out to anybody who's helped you out along the journey um, yeah. that you wanted to give, you know, some acknowledgement to. 
Yeah. So first off, man, I want to thank you. You know, you you inspired me today. You know, you brought my energy level up here, and uh, you know that's that's something that's awesome. So I appreciate you. You know, and uh, you know I appreciate what you're, I appreciate what you're doing. You know, you're giving back, and uh, yeah, man. You know, uh, I want to maintain this connection. I just want to see where you're at, see what you're doing. You know that 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 fulfills me. You know, um, and yeah. you know, parting shots. You know, don't live in a mind of scarcity, you know, live a life of, live in the mindset of abundance, you know, there's enough for everybody, you know, like, I'll use my career as an example, like, there's a lot of joint replacement surgeons in town, and yeah, I can be scared, like, oh, this person's taking away my, my patients, that person's taking away my patients, no, there's, there's plenty for everybody, you know, and if you play from a defensive standpoint of scarcity, you know, that's, that's not the best formula you got to be offensive you know so um you know that's it you know um also you know just just honor your hustle you know there's 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 no overnight success behind that overnight success quote unquote has been years years of hard work of grinding but you know a lot of us can be scared to put in the work but it's it's so worth it you know, it's so worth it. And just those little victories that you have along the way that you can have each day, each week, honor that, you know, honor that because that's one more step towards where you want to go. And they always say trust the process, but you know, it's, it's a cliche for a reason. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, I just want to thank your, your audience too. You know, I hope, hope you got something from that. Um, I'm here to help, you know, I want to thank you know, my parents for bringing me into this world, you know, for having always, uh, you know, kind of financially supported me and supported me a lot of ways too. Uh, uh, you know, I want to thank, uh, honestly, like, uh, you know, my ex-wife who is also now my best friend, you know, she pushes me and it's been a valuable relationship. Uh, I want to thank my dog Linus for, <laughs> for keeping me company throughout this coronavirus thing. Um, I also want to thank uh, Ulysses and the Influencer Press team. They're awesome. They do good work. You know, I've been been lucky, blessed to, to be able to collaborate and work with them. Uh, also, my social media team, iLegends, uh, Marco the Champion, uh, Kim, all those guys. You know, we've grown through this and we've learned. You know, we've scaled out. We've helped each other. So, um, I thank all my family, my cousins, you know, all my uh, – my fraternity brothers from the University of Michigan, you know, my, my hometown boys, you know, uh, thanks for being a part of the journey. So. Yeah. Love it, man. And on that note, as always, yeah. until the next episode, stay happy, stay healthy, stay wealthy, stay blessed and focused on success. I'm Harry Aaron Westbrook. That was an exclusive interview with Dr. David Fabi. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate you.